Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. It's always good when it's Friday. Hope you like my glasses. I just left the eye doctor, and one of my eyes is a little bit tender, so I threw the glasses on. I have to get shots in my eyes from time to time. And uh, today I went in and had a really good report. I didn't have to have the shots, but I had all the prep work prep work done ahead of time. And so uh, that's what's got my eye a little bit tender. Anyways, I've, everything is fine. Um, I just wanted to talk to you about some things in general, if you have a minute to spend with me. Um, I'm looking at the world. I'm looking at the people. I'm looking at the Bible. And I'm trying to understand what it is that makes people um, do the things they do. Now, of course, I think we all have a good idea of what drives people to do the things they do. And if I had to sum it up in one word, I would say our, oh, this is two words, our flesh. But flesh is the word I'm emphasizing. You know, we like certain things. We want certain things and we'll do whatever we need to do sometimes to get those certain things. Maybe you want to buy a new car so you work more overtime and you spend time doing that or you're saving money for a home and so you work more overtime or you sell some things, you pay down your debt. You know, we get focused on things like that. Sometimes it's sinful things and we say, hey, if I do this and do that, then I can satisfy that desire that I have in the flesh. But it's our flesh so much that pushes us to do the things we do. And the Bible, when we look at it, you know, it tells us we should not let the flesh govern the way we live, but we should be led by the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And that's sometimes hard to wrap our minds around and really understand how do you do that, right? It's not that easy. And what it takes, I think, is understanding the Bible more and how the Holy Spirit lives in us and how he helps us with things and how we learn to listen for him or to, you know, sense the direction maybe we should go. And a lot of times it happens through our conscience, right? We um, go along and we think, hey, I want to do this. But then our conscience says to us, you know, you really shouldn't do that. But we want it, so we do it. And that's a problem. And so I'm, I'm looking at some of the things Jesus talked about when his disciples were asking him um, about, you know, hey, how are we going to know when the time of the end is here? And knowing when the time of the end is near is important. But the time of the end for you and me could be today. Now, I am driving down the road, and I, I somebody could hit me. I could hit somebody. You know, things like that can happen. Uh, I could get killed in a car accident. I could have a heart attack today. Uh, you know, I just, I'm throwing things out there that happen to people every day. I'm not saying anything like that's going to happen here, but who knows? We don't know. We don't know when we are going to be called. And when we're called to leave this world, we are called to account. What happens after we leave this world? Now we know that if we know Christ is our personal Savior and have accepted him and the forgiveness that he gets, okay, the next thing we'll do is our next breath we take will be in heaven. And our life and circumstances and everything will be completely changed and completely changed for the better. And that's why we have so much hope as Christians. And I certainly have a lot of hope and faith in the Bible and in God and what I believe. And I have so much assurance from that. Um, in uh, the book of First John, John tells us this. And this is the confidence we have in knowing him. We have this confidence, this assurance. We have this assurance knowing that we are saved, knowing where we are going when we die, we know what's going to happen to us after we die. We know that, okay, there'll be a time where our bodies are in the ground, sure, but our spirit will be with the Lord. And there's another time coming that's called the rapture. 
could happen in our lifetime, but it may not happen in our lifetime. We don't know because the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour, not even the Son of Man. So that is something that God has not shared with his son yet. And I don't understand that. You know, does Jesus know? Does he not know? I don't know because he knows all things. But these are things that we'll understand once we get to heaven. Um and it probably has a lot to do with the Jews that he was talking about, talking with at the time, because the church, the believers, now going to church doesn't make you a believer. You have to make yourself, you know, through Jesus Christ, you have to make the decision yourself to become a believer and have faith in Christ. Now, once we do that, okay, we go to heaven. Now, there is coming a day when there's going to be what is called a marriage ceremony in heaven. That's where Christ and the church are reunited. Christ and those who believe in him will be together forever, not just our spirits, but our, our new bodies. It's referred to as our glorified bodies. The sin stain is gone. We're, we're made new. We don't have to struggle with the desires of the flesh, you know, the lustful things or some things that aren't lustful, but maybe I'm spending my money on things I shouldn't spend them on, spend it on, you know, maybe I could give more away. Maybe I could do things to help people more. Uh, you know, it, it, it can be all in different degrees and, and based on different situations. But one way to tell where your priorities are is, well, we used to say, look at your checkbook register, but look at your banking online and see where the money's going. And then that's where our hearts are set. And that might sound a little harsh, but let's face it, that's some pretty good evidence for us to know where we're putting our priorities. And when Jesus was talking to the disciples and they're saying, you know, tell us, you know, what it's going to be like when we get near the end. And and uh, he's sharing with them and things. And, and you may have heard this out of the Bible where it says, as in the days of Noah, people will be marrying and giving in marriage and going to and fro in the world and, and these types of things. And... <clears throat> Not even going to be thinking about God. They're just going to be going about their daily lives and and thinking all is well. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm getting the things that I want and I'm getting the things that I need. And I, I have a place to live and all this stuff. And our focus is so worldly. And I think at times we're all guilty of that. We think about these things that we want, but we also must have a desire for the things of God. You know, we're instructed to think on these things or let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We need to set our mind on things above. We need to be serious about our faith. Of course we have to go to work. Of course I have to have a car so I can drive to work and do my job. Of course we need these things. It was no different in the Old Testament. They just didn't have cars and internet. Uh, you know, they rode donkeys and, and things like that. They had a different situation, but their mind was the same. King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the, under the, how did he say it? There's nothing new under heavens or there's nothing new under the sky. There's nothing new. Mankind, our hearts are the same today as they were then. We consider ourselves more sophisticated, but should we if we're doing the same sins? So in the days of Noah also, the world had become very corrupt, and God said he, he regretted that he even made man. Can you imagine that? But man had turned our backs on God somewhat like today. Today is not much different. You know, the world tries to change our thinking. They want us to think that these uh, gender transitions and letting children be what they want to be and not 
helping them understand why God made them the way they did. We say that, you know, it's really, it's okay for a man and a, and a man to get married or a woman and a man to get married or, you know, whatever you want is okay. Because if they convince you that whatever you want is okay, now you are God because you're calling the shots. You're making up your mind about what's best for you, and that's deception. Don't be deceived. God is true. Let every man be a liar. Our truth needs to be God's truth, not what we want truth to be. Oh, it'd be great to, you know, make everything the way we want it, you know, get the things we want, even the things that we shouldn't have. And that's going on today a lot, like this transgendering stuff and, and things like that. <clears throat> it seems like we're near the days of Noah, what it was like then. Society as a whole turned its back on God. God, we don't need you. We're getting along just fine here. But what they don't understand is God gives them every breath that they breathe. He is the creator. He is the one who made us like we are. He is the one who allows us to have breath and life. And we need to understand that God loves us. God has made a way for us to be with him. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Why? To seek and to save those who were lost. God wants to know you. God wants to forgive you of your sin. God wants you to have a, an abundant life. And once we get to know God, the longer we know him, the more we understand the Bible, the more our relationship with him grows, the greater our understanding of why his ways are better than our own ways or our fleshly desires. We grow to want what he wants. So I, I want to ask you to reflect on yourselves and say, hey, who am I? What am I doing? Where are my priorities? Am I trusting God with my life? Am I following him? Am I trusting the, the nudges and the pushes that come to me from his spirit living in me? Or have I ever accepted him? If that answer is no, I, I, I really want you to consider that. I can't make that decision for you. You can't say, okay, I'll do it. No, you have to believe with all your heart, God is real. His son Jesus is real. And I believe that. I believe that his son died on the cross to pay the penalty for the sin of, in my life. And if I accept that, that he died on the cross, shed his blood. The blood was the payment for sin because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, we read in the Bible. And I believe that, that he rose from the dead and he lives on high. I mean, I believe that. This is the attitude you have to take. I believe. God, I believe this and I want to know you and I accept you. I, I want to know that my eternity with you is secure and that these days that I have remaining on this earth, I want to live them for you. I want to help other people. I want you to go to work with me. I want you to help me in all the decisions that I make in my life. I want to do what's right according to your will and your word. And so I just want you to think about these things, you know, what's going on in the world? Well, as believers, we are in the world, but not of the world. Yes, we have to live here. We don't have a choice at this time. Till we pass from this earth, we live here. And God gives us an awesome manual called the Bible for how to live successfully in this world and how that we can um, be blessed in this world and know what real joy is. Real joy isn't, you know, I, I like to buy tools, as most of you know. I enjoy them. But after it's in the drawer for a while, and I've used it four or five times throughout the course of a year, and, you know, it's great to have it there. 
but it's not something that I rely on every day to keep me safe, to keep me out of trouble. You know, God is there always. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, Jesus said. He's our anchor. He's the one we need in our lives more than anything. So I'm asking you, make God your top priority. Make him your master, your king, your Lord, and your savior. And he will be there for you, I promise you. He is the key to joy. You know, we can be happy for a day or we can get excited because we got something cool that we've been saving for. Whatever. You can go, go every day and wake up, thank God for the day that he's given you. And then from there, you can live for him. Do your best for him. Glorify him. We work and do our jobs and the things that we do to bring glory to his name because we live the way he wants us to live. If people will look at you and say, wow, man, that guy, that lady, they're so honest. They're so happy. Why are they so happy all the time? What is it about them that's different? That is usually a sign that they are an authentic believer. And we, our spirits, can bear witness with one another. We can recognize that. So that's all. I had a few minutes to drive down the road. I wanted to talk to you, and I wanted to tell you that Jesus is Lord and wants to be your Savior. And I pray that you will trust him today. Leave me a message if you like. Leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. And uh, have a good day. It's Friday. Have a good weekend. And I'll talk to you soon.